Hey, DMV, Washington, D.C. basketball. How you doing? My name is Stacy Robinson. I'm down here at Watch Playground this uh, Wednesday uh, morning. We're going to chop it up about D.C. basketball with Mr. Raymond Lyon. I came up I came up a basketball game in Washington, D.C., man, as a 11-year-old kid. Started off at Harrison Playground um, over Northwest Washington, D.C., 13th and V Street. Then I moved to Southeast Washington, D.C. in the fifth grade and started playing at St. Teresa's Catholic School with a man by the name of Earl Davis. Uh, we used to be on the playgrounds just shooting around, playing here and there, and they had a CYO league playing, or uh, forming. And we didn't go to Catholic School, but uh, they let us play in the Catholic School League. But they, once the league got started, and they found out how good we was, me, Russell Waddell, Donald Bullock, Ronald Bullock, Cheese Holloway, Ed Jordan, QB Robinson, guys such as that nature, a couple of us ended up going to Catholic School. My brother Steve Robinson as well. Yeah, one of the guys, one of the guys that uh, I looked up to as a youngster was by the name of Russell Waddell, who really worked on me with my jump shot as a kid. I used to shoot it like here in the front of my face, but he, he got it right here. Uh, then I ran into guys such as Cheese, uh, Alonzo Cheese Holloway, a great player out of St. Anthony's High School, Robert Junior High, Ed Jordan. A lot of guys know him by playing in the league with the Los Angeles Lakers. Great NBA coach, QB Robinson, out of uh, Anacostia High School. William Rankin, um, a host of other guys, man. Quilly Mixon, another young man, uh, may rest in peace, that uh, we used to chop it up on the playgrounds of St. Teresa and go up and down. And obviously, I was 12 years old, playing with them at 15 years old. And I, uh, Cheese Holloway, was a little small left hand guard that I had to check every day. And Ed Jordan was another great defensive player. Also had a lot of offense with him. So I came up underneath the guys with good tooling. Hacking them out of Fort Stanton. Uh, Andre, Andre Davis out of Wilson. Man, there's just a lot of guys, man. The Dunmore brothers out of Blue High School. Put me underneath their wing as a young kid. Dellen and Boo Boo Dunmore. The Dunbar situation came about, I was a high school, I was a junior in 11th grade at Crossland High School and they had an all-star game over at Sutherland High School that was for the seniors. Donald Duck Williams, Penny Green, Lou West Stover, Larry Heron, Keith Heron, guys of that nature was playing. So Maryland didn't have enough players. So the man, Mr. Davis, asked me did I want to play. And I knew my consequences a plan it was only for the juniors, but all the coaches in the country was there. I mean, everybody in the world. Dean Smith, Lefty Giselle, Tate Slock, Gene Bartow from Memphis State, Lefty from Maryland, Tate Slock from Clemson. Everybody in the world was there. So I put on the uniform and played, and I got the MVP in that game. I had 36 in that game as a junior. And coming to my senior year, my arch rival with Cross was going to be Blaisburg High School. And Coach Roy Henderson went up to the board up in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and protested that I played in the game. So he ruled me in the edge, and that's when I transferred down to Dunbar U down in Washington, D.C., and never looked back. Now, at the time, well, when all them coaches, you know, you really know what's going on because you just come back from five star basketball camp that, that early that summer, so you really know that they're, 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 they're recruiting you. So, you know, um, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a thing that I said, once again, I got to show these guys what I can really do because they just saw me up at five-star basketball camp. I had a great five-star basketball camp. I was um, Parade All-American, Speaker Smith All-American. So I had to show them that, you know, I can only I can only do it against the kids my age, the young men my age. I could do it against older kids, older guys too. So I did it against seniors. And um, that's a great question right there, man. You really have to... Understand when the college coaches come to the gym, who's there, who they there to see, uh, what's their, what's, what, what is their, what is their purpose? Their purpose is to see you perform and see if you're capable of playing for their university. Man, some of my biggest rivals in DC Double I Double A was a guy by the name of Barry Frazier, made rest in peace out of Woodson High School. Straight out jump shot, straight up jump shot shooter. Could shoot the long ball before the three-point shot even came out. Ambie Cricket Williams, 
uh, another great guard out of McKinney Tech High School, who ended up playing in Jacksonville. Barry Frazier ended up leading UDC, one of the top scorers in the country. My, my also had my rival, Lamont Reed, the high flyer, who uh, ended up at Oral Roberts. James Turk Tillman, my running mate Joe Tweed, who played with me. Uh, a guy also out of Parkville High School by the name of Pennington Green. We call him Penny Green, man. Could flat out do it. And man, the whole DC metropolitan area in the 70s, everybody could play. Donald Doug Williams could play Doyle Scott. Uh, my brother Steve Robson, me and him used to play a lot of one on ones together. You know, uh, he was just as good as me, but by me coming up, by him being my brother, he didn't get the accolades that he deserved. Uh, he was underneath the microscope as far as the college coach, but man, he could flat out play. Playing with him and the majority of the one-on-ones really got my game to where I was at. And then the great Jerome McDaniels out of Fremont Heights High School. Steve Higgins out of Spring Island High. These guys are older than me, but I can remember one day, man, um, sitting on Jerome McDaniels' porch waiting for him to come home. And we're going to go at Ridge Road to play. There's another playground that we should play at uh, over in Northeast. I mean, over South of D.C. And he turned the corner and he had Austin Carr in his car. Now, Austin Carr was, out of, was one of the greatest come out of Mackin and um, went to the University of Notre Dame. Averaged like 41 points a game throughout his college career. And man, I was in awe, man. I got in the car with Austin Carr and Jerome McDaniels and I sit back and I watched him. I was watching him. I said, man, I'm in the car with Austin Carr and Jerome McDaniels. So when I got to the playground, they let me play. Willie Daniels was up there, um, M.B. Shaw, Big Biggie Cunningham, Stanley Washington, uh, Stanley Washington, uh, Stanley Parham, and I was in the eighth grade playing with guys like that. Jerry said, don't be nervous. I didn't bring you up. Be, I held my own. I didn't turn the ball over maybe about two times, but I shot the ball good. And also, another, if you get back, pick back in your cut, the great Jojo Hunter, Billy Bryant, Delonte Taylor, a couple of more guys that I come up with that run my rivalries that we just love to go up against. Chick Riles, maybe rest in peace. Also, Decky Vaughn, Archie Talley. Ralph Ledbetter. Man, you say talk about Jojo Hunter. This guy right here, in my time, might be one of the most prolific scores that ever lace him up that come to the city of Washington, D.C. He didn't have a long, he didn't have a long 35, 40 foot jump shot, but he did shoot it. But mid range, anything from top around the key to the to the corners, the elbow and all that was dangerous. Uh, I seen him put on shows 40, 50 points, 35, 41 points. High, this is high school. This is high school. He was he was really he was really a tough check. He wasn't a big guard. He wasn't no more than about 6'1". But man, he could do it. He could go right, he could go left. He could play over top of the basket. Like I say, man, he might have been one of the most prolific scorers to come through here in my time. Come to Washington, D.C., he is one of the most prolific scorers, along with Austin Carr, Will Jones, Greg, Mr. G. Sanders, uh, out of uh, St. Bonaventure. Was another flat out score, but JoJo Hunter, yeah, he's a tough check. I talked to JoJo almost every other day for the last, this is like the last two or three months. Uh, we had a talk. Uh, I need to get back in contact with Anthony JoJo Hunter, the scoring machine. Man, my favorite playground to play by was right here where we're sitting at now. Watch playground because, see, I was right there to see President on Central Avenue, so we had to come across the line to play. Well, we didn't really have to come across the line to play. We had Palmer Park, Pepper Mill Village, Glen Island Rec, but as far as outdoors, Watts Playground was the mecca of basketball in this corner park of the town, Northeast Washington, D.C. Once again, you had Steve Higgins, you had Fatty Taylor, may rest in peace, that played at, uh, what college did Fatty go to? Good God Almighty, man, but he played with the Virginia Squires. He ran the point guard with, uh, with Doc and them. I think he went to LaSalle. We should come down here and watch them guys play. Him, Steve Higgins, Jerry Mack, Stanley Washington, Curtis Moore, 
Kenneth Key, Skeeter Penn, Tony Hunter, uh, 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 the big boy that went to McKinley Tech. Uh, good God, of mine, I just had his name, man. I just I can't think of his name right now, man. But uh, we had some great ball. My, my cousin Longy Marino, the great Archie Talley, thank you, Ron, Don Leon Marino, Brandon Jackson, Rodney Wright. May he rest in peace, James Ratcliffe. May he rest in peace too. Craig Big Guy Shelton, Lewis Whiting. Man, we had them all down here. Cato, Charles Thornton, Mike, 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 Mike Wright. You know, man, we had some great players to come through here, man. Kurt Smith, you know, of course. He's younger than me, but you know, we're just talking about the man. It, 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 you had to be down here every day at 3:30. Daniel Swinton. Brian L.B., Agent Branch, oldest brother Charles Branch, may he rest in peace, man. One of the first big 6'5 guys I've seen that come through here that can do it all. Play this collegiate ball in Old Dominion. Man, they, they came from all ends to come down here to play. Some of the younger guys that came up under me with my brother, Steve Robinson, Crossland High School, Mark Clark, Dwayne Space Nichols out of Fremont Heights High School. Chick Lyles out of Parkdale High. James Wright out of Park. Kurt Smith, the, 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 uh, the troublemaker. Craig Jones, Curtis Malone, Henry Hall, Brian Ellis, I mean, Brian, Brian, um, I mean, Tim Bendable, Brian Waller. Man, the list can go on and on and on, man. Booty, Booty Green, Earl Moore, Lyndon DeBella. I'd like to send a shout out to him, man. He's currently going through uh, his health problems right now. Lyndon DeBella, love you, champ, out of Cordova High School, UDC Finest. And man, these guys, see, it was passed down to me, and we passed it down to them. And it's, that's how DC basketball go. You know, you pass it down. You, you pass it down to the ones that's coming up after you, man, to keep the game going in the city. Like right now, the playground is very naked right now. There's no one out here shooting around, but it's 12 o'clock in the day. But when we was coming up at 12 o'clock in the day, man, there was guys out here playing. Two on twos, three on threes. Then at 3.30, man, it was jam packed. That's tell it off, uh, Raymond. Great question, Raymond. That's tell it off, man, due to the AU. The AU uh, uh, basketball has came in, has taken over the, the inner city game, man. Cause they keep the kid, they keep the kids in the gym. They keep the kids on the road at 11, 9, 10, 11, 9, 10, 11 years old, 12. They on the road every day. They don't have time to come and hit the playground and, and play the playground game. They keep them in the gym, training them with these cones and these tables and these kids, and which is okay. But that's not basketball. That's not learning. That's not learning how to play the game. Because when you come down on a one-on-one, -on -one, the man is checking you. He's not a cone. He's going to be able to move. So, you know, uh, I just think the AU bas basketball man has hurt, has, has hurt the playground basketball game, man. You don't see the kids on it. I don't want to call them kids. You don't see the young men on the court playing anymore, man. It's very seldom you come down and see any playground full now. Because the coaches tell them, don't go down to the playground. You might get hurt. Uh, Lord John, John, they might be down there. They might undercut you, but you can get undercut anywhere, man. You can, you can in your career anywhere, man. You have. To, I would love to see the play. I would love to see the basketball game come back to the playground, man. Yeah, before I leave this earth, man, because right now, man, it's totally unacceptable, man. Look at these great courts down here, man. You got Ridge Road, you got Luzon uptown, you got Watkins. You know, man, this is this is totally unacceptable, man. Only time you see them down here playing is when the tournament is down here. Watch playground. You got the Goodman League over southeast. They don't even play in the playgrounds no more, man. What you what you get on a blacktop, Raymond, man? You get toughness, man. You get toughness, man. You you learn moves, man. You learn how to you learn how to be tricky. You learn how to you learn how to alter your shot over top of. Guys that can jump to the moon every day. See, because a couple of days you come down the playgrounds, you might not score a bucket because 
everybody on the playgrounds can flat out play. You got guys that didn't even play high school basketball that come on the playgrounds and hold their own. You just, you just learn, you just learn, you just learn um, the in and outs, man. You, you work with your, your in and out move. We weren't stepping back when we was playing. You know, you learn how to raise up on your jump on the mid range. You learn how to use the backboard. Um, it's just so many things, man. That that on the on the playground, it te- that that playground basketball just, just just gets you ready for everything. If you can play on the playgrounds of any city that you come from, man, you can play anywhere in the world, man. Cause right here on this asphalt and then this city. That's where the game is learned, man. I mean, that's, that's how I feel about it, man. That's where the game, that's where I learned the game on the asphalt. Not in the gym, but on that asphalt. Going up against guys, I'm, I'm nine years old, 10 years old. I'm kind of tall, but going up against guys, 15 to 16 years old, grabbing my shot, throwing it in the trees, throwing it all up against the school buildings and all that. And I'm like, man, when I go home tonight, some things I gotta work on. So I go to the playground and work out one-on-one. Man, he's not gonna get my shot no more. I might go here with the left hand. I might come behind the back, throw it off the board, try dunking it. You, you got to have that on the, you got to have moves on the playground. You can't be one way. Yeah. We, we didn't have that many. We had the Sherwood tournament down there on 8th and H. We had the Ridge Road tournament over here at Ridge Road Playground. And then we had the tournament Melvin's Crab House. And we were like, we only had about two or three tournaments. But them was the top tournaments, man. If you couldn't play, if you couldn't hold your own in them tournaments there, wasn't no sense you getting on the asphalt, wasn't no sense you getting on no summer league team. Oh, uh, because everybody could play back then. All the teams was fully loaded. Uh, we had big men back then. Our big men back then wasn't playing, wasn't shooting three pointers. We had big men that were putting on their hard hats going in that paint, doing that construction work. So, you know, them three tournaments right there were, were, were I think, the top. Then you had a little tournament over Murray Playground over by Eastern High School. Them cats from over at Eastern, uh, uh, Larry Logan and Tony Campbell and them guys, they used to play in a tournament over there uh, called Murray. But we didn't have that many tournaments like they have now. I just wish I could turn back to have the times and play one more time with all these tournaments that they're having now, man, because Everywhere you look, man, it's a tournament. Every day is a tournament somewhere, man. And that's that's the only thing I can say about the basketball now. They they, they keep them playing though. They keep them playing in them tournaments. My elbow, my elbow with the with the experience was was a little limited, uh, Raymond. Another great question you asked because you know I had a situation, man. Uh, the streets sort of like start taking its toll on me. You know what I'm saying? I was doing things I didn't have no business doing. You know, I got into the the drug scene. And uh, I played once, one or two years of the coalition. Uh, held my own, but I, I fizzled out because my body, man, was telling me to go do something else. And the basketball was slowly but surely slipping away. You know, I had, like I say, man, I had a drug problem back then. And uh, I tried to clean myself up, man, but I just couldn't get over that hurdle. Now that I'm older, I'm clean now, and man, that Urban Coalition basketball was one of the best summer league tournaments in the United States of America. They can talk about the Rucker, which the Rucker is a heavy hitter too, but down here in Washington, D.C., yeah, we got that D.C. Urban Coalition, and everybody from all over came down to play in the D.C. Coalition, just like they used to go over and play in the Rucker. Then they had a team, Sunny Hill, I think, had a team up in Philadelphia. They should go play the Sunny Hills tournament up in Philadelphia too. So, you know, it was some great basketball being played, man, back then. The 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 the, 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 the and the, the, the Kennedy League don't get the same uh, recognition. I, I, I just want to say this. It's not the players. It's the guys that be running the Herbo and the, and the, and the, and the, uh, and the Kennedy League. There's always something going on behind the table with who's in charge, who's going to play, what they will do. It's not the players. It can't be the players because, see, the players from D.C. can play anywhere in the United States of America. That's not, that's, that's what they're out of doubt. The players from New York, great ball players, they can play anywhere. The players from Baltimore, players from uh, Maryland, 
the players from Georgia, Philly. I don't, it's, it's not the players. It can't be the players. It got to be the organizations of the tournaments, man. There's no way in the world you're not, you can't, you're not supposed to have an urban coalition and a Kenner League going on in, um, in Washington, D.C. Now, Jordan, I mean, uh, what's his name, Brooks, Jordan Brooks' father, you know, he had the coalition and he had the thing up and running. He was doing great up there, man. Then all of a sudden, you know, like I say, I don't, I can't really talk about it, but things just start going, you know. Then, then he's not up there no more, man. Why, why, why this guy is not running? The, I don't know, man. You know, Georgetown, great school. Coach Thompson, may he rest in peace. Uh, you know, he had us come up on the campus. Um, and they didn't really, really want us up at Georgetown at first. But John Thompson talked to everybody, man. Look here, man. <laughs> cut the cut the cut the nonsense out. Y'all up on my campus. I would like to see it get started again, man. Cause that was a great lead, the Kennedy League, man, and the coalition, man. Somebody got to pick it up in this city, man. Somebody got to pick it up in the city man. once again, man. Cause the ruckus is still going on. I don't know if they still got the league up in Philadelphia, and they got some great leagues that's going on in Baltimore. Some great summer pro leagues. Uh, I think they got some of the Camelo Center. Uh, I talked to Keith, uh, Keith Goody, uh, the boy uh, Kurt Lee, and uh, and them uh, doing great things up there, man. Uh, uh, with the with the basketball, it's just that the people. I don't. It's, just, it's like the ones up top, man. Just don't want to see. I don't basketball. I don't know. I bet they try to make it a whole soccer thing now, man. I don't know what they doing, man. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. <laughs> now my some my my some my, my, so my favorite memories of playing, man, was turning that corner right there and seeing the playground loaded and walking through the gates where you didn't have to ask, not toot my horn or nothing, but you didn't have to ask who had next, right? You see, because I was like I say, I was on that high school All American team in 1975. So when you're high school All American and when you walk around the city, you know you really don't have to take a shot for the game. You already you already be chosen. Not just me, but a, a lot of guys that come through these gates. Uh, that's one of my favorite memories. Another one of my favorite memories, man, was um, when I was at Eastern. When I was at Dunbar High School, we played Eastern over Stingon. And it was like 50,000 people at the game, and the fire marshal put the chains on the door and told them they couldn't let nobody else in because they in here boogieing. Stacy Robinson and Turk Tillman, see me and Turk Tillman was named in that Parade All America team. He's out of Eastern High School as well, class of 1975. And they had us up by 16, and I was on the bench. Coach McBell, Coach McBell would move about. We was Johnny Dunn, Baby Dunn, Emmy Henderson, Joe Tweed, and them. They was chipping away, Craig shouting. Coach looked down on me and bitch about 30 seconds left to go in the game. We was tied up. Or something in there. I don't know. I can't really remember how much time. But anyhow, I come off the bench. I go to my man who I served for. I say, you know you're not coming back in, right? This, this, this is over with. I'm going to get ready to end this right here, right? So. I say, grab your warm up and sit down and watch the rest of the game because you're done. So, about, about 15 seconds on the clock, Ethan come down and take a shot and they go up one. We took the ball, now, then, they, then we missed it, something went out. Lonnie Dunn steals one, steals the ball from somebody. He kicks it out to me, I'm in the front of the pack. All I gotta do, Raymond, is go to the court, go to the, to the uh, basket, lay it up, and we win the ball game by one. Instead of me going to the to make the layup, I go to the, here and I go to the corner, and I hear my coach hollering, "What the f are you doing?" <laughs> and as soon as he said that, it's about three seconds left to go. Man, I raise up in the air and I hit the jump shot over top of Mike Morrison, who was six eight. And when I let it go, the crowd say, and they hit the bottom of the net. 
and it was a game when I came down out the air. Like I said, the golf course is right there by Spring on High School. I was on the 19th hole <laughs> with a bogey. <laughs> Ball game. <laughs> oh man, it just, I had a good high school career. I just wish I would have done the right things, man, and got in that classroom, man, and uh, hit them books. You young guys, man, if y'all ever see this story, this young man, Raymond Com Coleman, nah, Raymond Lyons, if he put this story out, man, you know, man, hit them books. Because, see, the ass will go out that basketball sooner or later. He had to have something to fall back on. I'm just getting my first job, man, at 50-something years old. I'm down at Amtrak. And uh, I wish I would have listened to my parents back then, man. Uh, I just wish, man, like I said, man, if I could do it all over again, my first priority, man, would be going to them classroom. I didn't go to class. Um, I just went enough just to stay eligible. Um, it's just a sudden about going in that classroom. I, I, I just couldn't just stay focused in there, uh, which is all me. It wasn't the teacher, it just was me. I just was on something different, man. I just was just doing things I didn't have no business doing, man, in the hallway, over the pool hall. But I did, I did, I did just enough just to stay eligible. So, you know, I would change, I would change that, man, if I could do it all over again. I was, great question, Raymond. I was able to generate my reputation nationwide because I used to go to city and city to play. I used to go to Atlanta, West Virginia to play. I was born in Charleston, West Virginia. I used to go up to Baltimore to play. Skip Wise, Marvin Webster, Leon Lord, Tim Green and them guys. Larry Gibson, made rest in peace to all American out of Dunbar High. I used to go up there and play with them during the summer. I used to go to Virginia and play with guys such as Herb Estes, the All-American out of T.C. Williams, and Carl Jackson, Little Willie Jackson, may he rest in peace, another great guard out of T.C. Williams, the Turner Boys, Ernie Moton. So you had to take, you had to broaden your game. In order, in order to broaden your game, you had to go from city to city to play. And that, 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 that helped me a whole lot. Uh, I wasn't afraid to go nowhere and play. The kids today, the, the social media thing, uh, this is this is helping their game, but you're six foot eight, son, and you're averaging seven point five a game, and you're gonna put your name in a hardship. You put in it for what, son? You're not ready. I just think the kids today, man, just need like I say, man, come back to the playground, stay off that social media, and and work on your game, man. Broaden your game, man. Stop stop selling for this three ball. The game now today has changed, really. Like I say, they shoot the three, but man, the, the real game is getting to that rack, finishing, dunking on seven footers. Uh, not saying that they don't, they don't do that today, but that, that social media thing is just. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be a kid playing today. If I was playing, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use that social media thing. My game would speak for itself. I wouldn't be all on talking about what I did in Florida, what I did. I never really talked about my game. I let my game speak for itself and let the other people do the talking. I just think the young kids today, man, they're under so much pressure, you know, with, with they want their parents want them to their parents want them to be great before they're great. Parents of the day, let your son and let your daughter, you know, let them learn the game. Don't force them to play the game of basketball. And also, we're speaking of this, they better get ready for the young ladies game too, man. The young ladies are coming too, man. I hope I still be around. I've seen a couple of young ladies dunk, but I just want to see a young lady come down the lane and dunk on the whole five. Just give them the, just give them the female ladies a shout out, man. Uh, their, their, their game is on the upswing too. And they, like you say, the young guys and the young ladies today, it's too much social media. Too much, man. Man, I went up to Five Star Basketball Camp. They had a guy from out of Inglewood, New Jersey, by the name of Bill Willoughby. Bill Willoughby, I hope you remember, man, if you see this, man. I remember you very well with Five Star. He was six foot eight. 
He didn't go to school. He didn't go to college. He was the first guy to go to the NBA. They think Moses Malone was the first guy to go to the NBA. NBA. Bill Willoughby and Dale Dawkins was the first two high school guys to come out to go to the NBA. Moses Malone went to the ABA. Bill Willoughby, Dale Dawkins. I played against Bill Cartwright in high school in the McDonald's Capital Classic. I played against Winford Barnes, who went to the University of San Francisco with him. I played against Bernard Richard, went to Notre Dame. Played against Kyle Macy, who went to Indiana, Kentucky. Played against Reggie Carter, the great guard out of uh, Long Island, Lufin, up in uh, New York. Bernard Richard, another great guard out of Matty Christie, who went to the University of Notre Dame. Man, I played against... Uh, Bruce Flowers, young man, Michael Korn, who played in the league at the University of North Carolina, Bradley Bradley, another guy that played in the league at the University of North Carolina, from up here at Edgewood, Maryland, um, Edgar Jones, out of Newark, New Jersey, went to Nevada, Reno, who played in the league with the San Antonio Spurs, big man, big shot blocker. You know, I played against so many guys, man, that, uh, that played in the league, man, and um, I just, you know, now that I'm 65, I look back on my career, I just, I just, you know, sometimes I just think, you see, I just like to sit back and think, man, do them guys bring my name up, you know, because I couldn't miss in high school, but it was, it was me that that, 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 that fumbled the ball. Because there was no way in the world that, uh, I, I'm going to say this though, if I'd have went to camp, NBA camp, I was going to make somebody's team. I like, a lot of guys come back talking about his politics. Man, they picked him because uh, his uncle worked in the front office and they kept him. You were going to get that from me. Because if I'd have went to camp, I was going to get me a bag of money. Cause this is basketball is what I was, was my life. But like man, I made some bad choices, man. But to them guys that played in the NBA, they came out with me. Man, I'm glad for you guys, because I know you guys. I played against you guys. I'm not gonna say none of you guys should have never made it. I'm not gonna call you guys sorry or you didn't belong. You guys done the right thing to get to the NBA. And man, my hat off to all y'all. But y'all do remember that Stacy Robinson in high school was right with y'all. I was on everybody's All-American team. And that's that's what I have to say about that, man. See, JoJo, see, see, go and pick it back into JoJo Hunter. He's the first guy from here that, 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 the, pro, that the pro scouts was talking about as far as coming out. He's the first guard. Not this man, I say God. So that just goes to show you how fantastic and great this guy was. They wanted to sign him out of uh, high school with the Philadelphia 76ers. I don't really know the story. You know, I don't know why he didn't go. That's none of my business. I just know that he decided to attend the University of Maryland. But. He could have played in the NBA. I think he did touch down. He had a short stint, but I did think, I want to say with the Milwaukee Bucks, if I'm not wrong. But I know he did touch down, maybe a half a season or so. But man, he was a shoe in. There was no way in the world he couldn't play in the NBA, man. There wasn't nothing he could do. But I think at the time when he was coming out, I think Maurice Cheeks was running the show up at the Philadelphia organization. And, 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 and I'm just saying to say, just by me knowing Joe, I was, Joe maybe was scratching his head and saying, man, I'm not going to the NBA and sit on no bench. That's just the type of mentality he had. He wasn't coming on, he wasn't going to come off the bench and play behind nobody. And see guys that, man, he, he made sure to win and came behind the bench. I don't really, that's just my saying. Jojo Hunter is not a bench, not a dude to come off nobody's bench. And 
Maurice Cheek was a top guard in the NBA at that time. And see, JoJo by them coming out of high school, they might have told, told Joe, man, here, sit for a minute. And man, Joe probably would have told them people a couple of things that they didn't really, really want to hear. But I didn't come in. <laughs> but that's my man, that Anthony JoJo Hunter, man. Yes, indeed, man. Delonte Taylor, what do you say, Chad? Let me send a shout out to Mike Tucker, uh, Kevin Taylor, and McKinley Tech, Ronnie Ho. Jeffrey Harrison, Skip McDaniels, how you doing, man? There's another young man that I came up that put me on the different rope. Skip McDaniels out of uh, Archbishop Carroll in the University of Niagara. He got a grandson, Becky McDaniels, y'all, that's getting ready to leave for Ann Arbor, Michigan in like two weeks. Remember his name, Dougie McDaniels out of Paul the Six. I call him D-Nice. He's a small guard, but he played like he's seven foot two. Watch them. Stay tuned. Hey, Raymond, man. I was recruited by everybody in the country, except for University of North Carolina and Kentucky. Maybe UCLA, I think. But that, that, that process right there, man, that was, that was one of the most exciting years. Coming to school, man, walking in the office, man, just asking, did I get any mail today? And the young lady gave me all kinds of mail. And then it was, a, it was also a hurting process too because coming to school at days when I know the coaches are coming to school to see me, but I decided to skip school. I ain't even gonna go to school. You know, for instance, Gene Bartow, who was coach of the Memphis State back then, came up to Crossing one time and he told me he was coming. The Memphis State was a powerhouse back then. So I didn't come to school, man. Me and the guys, we skipped school. We went to... So when I come to school the next day, the guidance counselor put me in the office and say, Mr. Robinson, you had Coach Bartow from the University from Memphis State came up here to see you. And he said he was aware, he was aware that he was supposed to come. Why you didn't come to class? Oh, um, I had diarrhea. I had, you know, all kinds of excuses, man. But I was recruited by everybody in the country. Lefty Giselle wanted to send me up Allegheny at the University of Maryland to play behind Brad Davis and come back and play behind Brad Davis. I told Lefty Giselle, Coach, thanks but no thanks. I'm not going up to Allegheny and come back and play behind Brad Davis. Because Brad Davis was a great ball player. He was super bad out of, out of, out of Beaver, Pennsylvania. Played in the league for a long, long time. But I, I felt as though Coming out of high school, man, I'm not coming here to sit behind no Brad Davis. I'm coming to sit on the floor. But I didn't have the grades, so I had to go to junior college. I ended up at Vincennes Junior College up in um, Vincennes, Indiana, one of the top junior colleges on the East Coast. I was going to be in the backcourt with a young man out of Chicago, Illinois, by the name of Ricky Green, who played on it, played at the University of Michigan, and went on to play, had a great pro career with the Utah Jazz. The big, the big fella, Lawrence, Bos Lawrence Boston, out of Cleveland, Ohio, who played at University of Maryland. Uh, he went on to have a great pro career, but I went to junior college and played them guys. I got some trouble. I had to leave junior college. And, uh, you know, just started, that's when I started fumbling, fumbling around from school to school. But just being recruited by all them coaches in the nation, man, you know, and just coming home with letters, letters and letters and, you know, my parents was proud of me. Man, you're being recruited. What you gonna do, what you gonna do? My whole story was, man, I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm, you know, I'm gonna do the right thing. But man, I was a, I was a minister of society to my own self, man. I was just, was just goofing off, man. Um, I wanted to, I really, Skip Wise, the great Skip Wise out of Baltimore High School had put Clemson University on me. He had told Tate Slop, who was a coach down at Clemson High, down at Clemson College, you know, that I was this young guy. He had taught me the ropes and get up here to put the staff on me and check, and check me out. Little did I know, <laughs> here again, man, Clemson been here three times looking for you. Where have you been?
My brother was sick. I had to stay on the I'm making up all kinds of excuses, man. You know, man. But <laughs> hey, man, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a good experience just knowing that college coaches was after you. Uh, I had a great camp, a five-star basketball camp, man. I would never trade. I wouldn't trade that in for the world. You know, that's where you make your All-American status at up at Homestead, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. You, you, you know, that, that goes for anybody in the city that play basketball, that play the game, and, and, and lay the foundation for this city. It bothers me sometimes, but, you know, I'm, I'm much older now, so it really don't bother me as much. But when you walk in the gym, the young kids should know who you are. You know, they should know their history. But some of them do, some of them don't. But when you come to the gym now, you know, it's old-timer. Look at him, man, his hair white, his teeth missing. Uh, he got a big stomach. They be joking, and it, it, it hurts sometimes because you really want to sit in and tell him, young man, when I was your age, we didn't disrespect the old, the old timers like that. You know, they don't really listen to your story, tell them, you know, about the going to school, about little things you do on the court. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, I just think, man, they just need to know their history a little better because there's some great, there's a lot of guys that's still walking here and a lot that's not here. We take our hand to all the ones that are not here that goes around to these tournaments and I see them speaking to the kids. Now, it's, really, it's up to them, the kids, to gather this information and take it and put it in their pocket or let it go over the top of their head. Um, that's, that's, that, that's a hard question right there to answer. You know, it, 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 it's always good when you walk in the gym or somebody somebody know you. You know, you, 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 you don't really gloat on that, but just to put in the call your name, you know, at 65, see I'm 65 now, and I played in 1975. So that's almost over 40 some years, going on 50 years. And I'm still around to drop my story and to come around and still watch the young kids play today. I still love coming to watch. Today, this Wednesday, we're down to DMV, down at number 14 Boys Club. We got high school and pro and games today. And I'm looking forward to going in and being on the mic and just chop it up, man. Just have fun, man, with, the, with, with basketball, yeah. man. When I transferred up Dunbar, if it, if it, if it, if it, I transferred from Crossland to Dunbar. It was either Dunbar or Easton. My man Joe Tweet, who played at, in the ninth grade at, uh, I mean, uh, Kent Junior High School. I played at Pullman Junior High School. We beat them. We won the championship that year. Woo, woo, woo. He said, Stacy, man, come on up Dunbar with me, man. Joe man, uh, woo, woo. Man, he, I said, for real, man, Dunbar? The history of Dunbar, man, is priceless. You got so many cats that went there. You got the great Will Jones, who was one of the all-time leading scorers that come through here at American University. You got Jim McBride. You got Hoyer Smith. You got Angelo Council. You got the great Cornelius Green, who was the first black quarterback to start in the Big Ten of Ohio State and take them to the Rose Bowl. Now, Eastern High School, you got the greatest come out of Eastern High School, too. I can't call all their names in me, but I say, man, I'm going on up Dunbar. I went up Dunbar, man. I joined teams with, joined with the likes of Baby Dern, Lonnie Dern, his brother, Emin Henderson, we call him Sweet Slim. Craig Sheldon was coming out of the ninth grade over at Elliott High School. That was one of the main reasons why I went up there because I played with Dunbar during the summer league down at Keller Miller, another top playground in the area. And I seen him grabbing everybody's shot, throwing it all up against the projects up at Lincoln Heights. And I say, I say, Dad, he's going to Dunbar. He's coming out of the ninth grade. I'm going to Dunbar with him. Look at how he, man, he was grabbing things. Everybody shot. And it just was... I wouldn't have went, I wouldn't have went no place else, man. Played against Ricky Williams, I mean Ricky Williams up Dunbar. 
Greg Nash, Lewis Whitey, another young man that played with me, may rest in peace, Jeff Mitchell. Man, whoever else I left off on that team, I don't think. You know, uh, man, we just had a great mob up there. The history is a small school, it's a historical school, and the basketball was, coming, was up and coming. In 1975, we went to Cold Field House. We lost that year. I didn't play but like two minutes in that game because I didn't come to practice that whole week. My name just came out on the Parade All-American team and I'd give them the Allen Iverson spiel. I say, practice? Are you kidding me? I'm not going to practice. I'm going to show up for the game Sunday at Cold Field House in front of 24,000, however, however many Cold Field House sitting at the time. So I go to the game. Coach Jodine let me suit up. They called the starting line about. My name was a call. I knew why I didn't, because I didn't come to practice. But the crowd was hollering, we want Stacy. We want Stacy. The beaches are rock. So he put me in the game. I come down the middle, go behind my back, and lay it up on Hawkeye Whitney, another great ball player out of here, out of the mouth of high, North Carolina State Fighters. He go for the block, and I switch hands and lay it with the left. I was going to leave the game because I didn't start and just show them you know, man, this is what you're doing to me. Having on the bench, I was young, but I missed the shot. And I had to come back and sit the rest of the game. We play him again the next week in the Knights of Columbus with George Mason. I had 44. They beat the Cold Field House by five. I had 44 the next game. So that experience of Dunbar, man, them, group, them guys, they really didn't accept me at first because I was coming from Maryland. I was on the All-American team. The Street of Smith team had already came out, the parade. And they was like, man, who this dude coming from Maryland, man? We got to show him the rules. But as time went on, we was young. You know, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of hatred, you know. But as we got older, you know, we got past that. Because they wanted to play, and I wanted to play. But I, I came off the bench. So guys, I don't know why y'all still upset. You know, I'm coming off the bench, but man, a great experience I've done by, man. Like I say, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it in for the world. My assistant coach, our assistant coach, Bucky, may he rest in peace, man. Uh, Jody and Davidson, one of the top coaches in the D, one of the top coaches in the DMV. Love, love that I played for him. He made me realize there wasn't no iron team, though, at the time, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I thought at that time, you know, that I really was the shit, you know. I didn't really have a big head, but when I seen that Parade All-American, when I seen my name on that Parade All-American team, I was like, that's the, that's the, that's the, in high school, that's the godfather of basketball. The Parade, I don't know if they still have it now or not, but I still got my name on the articles on the bread. Hey, oh my goodness, man. Kurt Charles Smith, man. Fatty Taylor is, uh, is his uncle. So, and, and, and basketball running in their family, sports running in their family, baseball, everything. His brother Charles Smith, but this Kurt Smith guy on this '94, you might not need, you might not see another one like him come through here for the next 30 years, man. At five foot nine, I'm not gonna give him five ten. He said five ten. I'm not gonna give him five ten. But man, it ain't nothing he could do, man. I mean, he could shoot the J, he can get to the rack, he could pat it, he could pass it. I'd have seen him put on shows and some of the top, I guess some of the top players in the United States of America, NBA guys, Sam Cassell, Katie Mobley, Steve Francis. Jay, Jay, Jay Williams, Camelo Anthony, you name it, man. Uh, Sam Cassell, I, did I say his name before? I mean, you know, not saying that these guys couldn't play, but man, 
That young man, Kurt T. O. U. B. L. E. U-B-L-E, Trevor Smith, out of Washington, D.C., Coolidge High School, Drake University in Damone's Hour. I'd love to see him touch down in the NBA. That, that, that's another cat that come from here. He didn't touch down. It's none of my it's not it's not my business why. That's his that's his that's his business. I never really asked him why. Because see, guys that you know that post a touchdown in the league, you don't say, man, why you didn't make it, man, if you if you're a show enough ball player, man. You don't ask him that, man. Because you don't get your feelings hurt, man. But man, he's doing good for the city now, man. This is, we had Watch Playground. He got a great summer league going down here, man. Uh, his main man just passed about a year or two ago, the great Charlie Harrison out of Archbishop Carroll, Georgetown University, Wake Forest. His brother Charles Smith. Man, he come from a, he come from a, he come from a, his brother Charles Smith, St. Anthony's High, Georgetown University, was on that Olympic, one of the four players out of Washington, D.C. to play on that Olympic team. And, you know, man, Kurt, he's just a great guy, man. He lives right around the corner. As we speak now, I can see his house from right here. He might be peeping out the window. What do you say, Kurt Smith? But, man, he's a great dude, man. He got a big heart. He got a good spirit. He, 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 he's just another great ball player that have laced him up to come out of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, man. You know, uh, I'm going to see him real soon. I stop past his house every other day to chop it up and talk to him. Ain't nothing bad you to say about the man, man. Nothing bad you to say about him. On this 94, they call it the 94. On this 94, like I said, you may not see no one like him. I know in my time, in my, in my lifetime, I'm going to be in the upper room. And I'm going to tell somebody in my family, dial up there on the cell phone and tell me, man, it's another Kurt Smith. Because I, I, don't, I don't see too many more kids coming through here like that. We got a young man, Earl Moore. Got a young man named Isaiah Moore, who's transferring to South Alabama. Remember his name too, y'all. Greg Jones, the Wizard. For those of you, the only school in Washington, D.C. that turned out the great guards. Could flat out score it, could handle it, could pass it, had great height, six foot two, was unstoppable. Was unstoppable. Another guy that should have touched, touched down in the league. Come on. Lonnie Hill. Lonnie Hill. Six foot five, real tricky. Left hand, right hand. Plays his game now when he played in, in the alumni league. He shoots everything off the backboard now. 35 footers. Corner shots off the backboard. Another guy that should have touched down in the NBA from here. I call him the L train. Lonnie Harrell. Georgetown University, Northeastern, Northeastern College. Trey Kelly. Trey Kelly, the machine gun. I nicknamed him that. Went to my alma mater, Dunbar. His name is Hanging High Up in the Raptors, University of South Carolina, all time greatest. Ten years overseas. I think he had a little stint with the Miami Heat. Uh, just got the coaching job up here at our university, Dunbar University. Seen him coach his first high school game the other night. He beat the idea uh, charter school. Could flat out play. Could flat out score. He might. He's a normal one that when it's all said and done, when they put the paperwork together, you had to put him down as one of the top, one of a prolific score that comes to Washington, D.C. Hey, Machine Gun. Hey, Trey Kelly. Booty Green. Booty, Clarence Booty Green. Here's a young man that I talk to every day, man. Um, six foot one at the most. Play a game above the rim in high school. Took the all man picture, went to Cheney State, made All-American, had the Olympic trial. Thought maybe he should have went higher than Cheney State, but he chose to go to Cheney State. Man, he fell out scoring now, still playing in our uh, 
fit in the old basketball league, they call it the old timers league. Six foot, like I say, six foot one, man. Plays hard. He played like, play like the Baltimore guys. He played real hard. See, the Baltimore boys play real hard. Not saying the DC dudes don't play hard, but the Baltimore dudes, they play real hard. Booney Green, man, oh man. That's another guy. We might not get a, I might not get another chance to see another kid come through like that. Out of Spring on High, yes indeed. My man. Didn't get to see a whole lot of Melvin Milton. But what I did see of him, I call him the Wizard 2, the Magician. That was Curly Neal from the Harlem Road Travel with the basketball. Guys that played with him and the guys that here around the city talk about he didn't shoot the jump shot. But man, I seen him with the coalition like three or four. Man, he ran the team and he had eyes in the back of his head. He patted the ball like he was on an arcade game. Uh, wasn't a big guard, but I'd have loved to play with him. I'd have loved the United States of America to score him with 85 points a game playing with him. Cause he could find you. Yeah, he could play it out find you. Wasn't no big guard, another great dude out of Spring Island High School, Melvin Miller. I called him the wizard also. Oh my, poetry in motion. This is a guy that he not gonna let you rush him. He gonna play, he gonna play at his own pace. You're not gonna you're not you're not gonna you're not you're not gonna make him do nothing that he don't wanna do. He gonna do what he wanna do anytime he want it, and on anybody that's, that's on the that's on the floor. They call him poetry in motion. He don't have the greatest speed, but man, he can flat out fill it up in that bucket. I got a picture at home of him when he's with the Vancouver Grizzlies that he's pulling, he got a jump shot and he got the jump shot pulling up on the mic on the great Michael Jordan. But you can see the move that you can see the way he got a jump up on the jump shot. You can see he give Mike that DC crossover. You can see that he <laughs> But man he there's no cat that come from Washington, D.C. Hey, Mike, if you see this, not taking nothing from you. I don't really know you, but I know of you. You're the greatest. But Lawrence Moten, he's my man out of Washington, D.C. He's back up in Syracuse now, doing great things up there. Brian Chase. Brian Pop Chase. Another dumb by you, man. Man, because Coach Greg Lankin had told me about him when he was in the night, when he first come up Dunbar. He said, Stacy, man, I got a... God up here, man. He remind me a little bit of you, but he, he's not as flashy as you. He don't do the things he, you do, but he do shoot the jump shot just like you. And he's not a big guard. So I say, man, what they say for Kramer? I say, let me go up here, man, and see. I'm gonna do. But I met him over on Trinidad, Northeast at the rec center. They was all standing in front of the rec one day. I think he had a cast on his hand. And I introduced myself to him. I said, man, how you doing, man? My name is Stacy Robson. I'm a former ball player at uh, Dunbar High School. I done heard so much. He said, man, I done heard a whole lot about you, too. And man, this young man can flat out shoot the J. At five foot eight, five foot nine. He had, he, he had a move where he come down, he always go between his legs. And then he had a catch and shoot move. He had a catch and shoot, but he, I nicknamed him Pop Chase because I just called him Stop and Pop. So I nicknamed him that name. So you guys in D.C., DMV, if y'all try to claim that name that y'all gave Brian Chase that name, Pop Chase, I will take y'all to court and sue y'all, okay? I gave him that name out of V-Tech. Done by you. What do you say, Pop Chase? I want to talk about two guys. I want to talk about Jerome McDaniels. Out of from my high, high school, who won three state championships, made lost his life a couple of years ago, man. Dude, do some things that didn't go as planned. Put me underneath his wing, man. Uh, that's one reason why I went to from my high early in my career. Then it's another one. 
Steve Holloway out of St. Anthony's High School, left-hander, went to Georgetown University, could fell out do it. And my last one, Steve Higgins out of Spring Island High School, man. These old timers, you know, taught me a whole lot, men, men, showed me the game, man. You know, you should always tell me, man, do the right thing. But I, you know, this didn't, I just made some bad decisions. It's a lot more old timers that I can talk about. We got one that's coming out here, the great Carl Holmes, who rebounded for Agent Danley at the Mapper High School. He started off at the University of Illinois, lived right over there, president stayed right over there. Man, was the chairman of the boards when he was coming up at six foot three. Uh, the other guy named I was trying to talk about earlier, that we were talking about the greats coming down there, what? Mars Tyler, out of McKinley Tech High School, one of the best I've ever seen with that baseline. Man, um, there's so many cats that you could talk about. And guys, if I didn't mention your name, you know, man, don't be upset, man. I just try to show everybody some love. You know, uh, just accept that. Archie Tyler, what do you say, baby? And uh, we just trying to keep stories going and let guys and young ladies hear the story. Now, to the young ladies and the young men out here, if you see this story, and you the first thing you're gonna say, man, who the dude look like Frederick Douglass, you know? But I was a kid at one time, and I made some bad choices. I didn't really get into it for a whole lot. But kids, I mean, young, young ladies and young men, do the right thing, man. Stay out these streets. Stay in them gyms. Nah, stay out these streets. Hit them books. Stay in them gyms and respect the next man. You might not have to like him, but you got to respect the next man. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, go a long way. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about, I hope I didn't talk about, talk, say nothing bad about the way the game is played today. I just like to say the game is played different. You know, it's played different than what we played. You guys and young ladies are still playing the game of basketball. And that's how I go. I like to see the young ladies, man, just get a little bit more publicity than what they get because their time is here. And big men, one of y'all gonna have to get back down in the paint. I'm gonna say that though. Just one of y'all. All y'all can't stand outside at seven foot and shoot the J. Raymond Line, good talking to you, chat. Keep up the good work. My name is Stacy Robinson, out of the University of Dunbar, Washington, D.C.